Good evening, everybody. I'm so delighted to be here, Mr. Gunner. Thank you very much for coming to all the members of the Diplomatic Corps, Business Elite, Media, all of you others who are so interested in the subject for coming, and of course to Shangri-La for inviting us to have this opportunity to meet. Um, I am going to take just a moment to introduce this small organization that I operate and then talk a little bit about um, the we'll Stop the Smoke project, but also in general about biochar and the entire problem of smoke and its origins here in the north. And then finally a little bit, just very briefly, about the project that we are in the process of beginning just today um, about agroforestry and our effort to move beyond um, just plain biochar. This is an organization that is non-denominational. We have no outside church support, no governmental support, nothing of the sort. We are in fact entirely devoted to the sustainable development goals and to the human, um, the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Um, we do children. We have about 45 children who live with us. We support another 30 children in the government. Um, boarding school. We have about 15 kids at university. We've got about 15 students who've graduated from university already. Um, we create jobs. We care for the abandoned elderly. And of course, we work an awful lot in the area of the environment. We sit in a bowl surrounded by forests that burn. What happens if you drive over those mountains is that you arrive at vast ongoing fields of corn and of other crops which get burned annually, right? We are not special. In fact, if we put it in perspective, you begin to think about this a little bit differently. If you think, well, what if only 10% of the smoke came from burning crop waste and not from forest fires? Would it be stupid to say, why don't we stop that 10%? We're not talking sugar waste here, we're not talking soy waste, we're not talking, we're just talking corn waste alone. 10 million tons of corn waste each year, okay? Now, what is the biggest building in Thailand? The Mahanakorn Tower. The Mahanakorn Tower only weighs 306,000 tons. Every year we produce 32 Mahana corn towers worth of corn waste. Okay? That's fairly impressive, isn't it? Well, guess what? We burn 50% of it, too. And this is where we think that Stop the Smoke makes a contribution. We do not claim that we can stop all the smoke. Stop the Smoke is not about stopping all of the smoke. Stop the Smoke is about taking on the smoke from crop waste. Okay, and for that we believe we actually have a solution. And since farmers burn about one half of their corn crop waste, we think that if you don't care about burning roughly five million tons of corn waste every year makes a difference, then we're not for you. You shouldn't pay any attention to us, okay? On the other hand, if you think that's a problem, you may want to pay attention to the rest of this proposal, this discussion, right? Because despite all the talk, the problem is not exactly rocket science, folks, right? It's really simple. You have a really big cornfield. What do you do to clear it out? You call in Mr. Bick, right? Right? You light him up, and what do you get? You get a clean fire, and you get a lot of smoke, okay? Now, what is the story here, right? People start fires for a reason, okay? If you don't know why they are burning, the only thing that you can do is to punish them. What we've learned over the years is that punishment does not work. People have tried punishing for centuries. They have tried punishing all around the world. I know of no successful case of punishment as a way of stopping field burning, okay? In fact, fires seem to follow punished people around. You can shoot at them, you can jail them, you can shoot them. It doesn't make any difference. Why? Because they don't have anything else to do. So if the Thais can't afford to do this, nobody else anywhere else in the world can afford to do this. 
There's just too much waste. That little lady up there is trying to pack bags full of corn cob. This is one of dozens and dozens and dozens of piles of corn cob in one corner of one sub-district of one district where we work, okay? They are all over the place. So what do you do to stop forest fires? We change people's incentives. What we do is say, if you don't burn, Mr. Farmer, we will give you money. We will pay you not to burn. What a remarkable concept. We will make it worth your while not to burn, to do something else. And how do we do that? Well, we stop the smoke by giving them the means to make biochar. All of these machines here are actually burning crop wood. Do you see any smoke anywhere? There is no smoke. Not only is there no smoke, there are no greenhouse gases being produced either. So this is a way of absolutely stopping Thailand's contributions to global emissions of carbon. It is a way of removing carbon from the atmosphere, therefore cooling the atmosphere. It is a way of stopping the production of smoke, PM 2.5, eliminating health issues, and so on and so forth. It's dead cheap and people do it. So what is this biochar stuff? Well, one way of thinking about it is that it's just super charcoal. You make charcoal very, very, very hot. When you make it very, very hot, it doesn't smoke. It releases no greenhouse gases, GHGs, right? The product that comes out the far end is 40% of the total amount of carbon that the plant removed from the atmosphere as it was growing. So it is a net reduction in the amount of, um, the amount of, uh, carbon that was actually in the atmosphere in a solid form. This is, these are corn, biochar corn cobs here. Um, and with the product itself, if you burn this charcoal, it burns very hot, it burns a very long time, and it burns without smoke and without GHGs because it's pure carbon, right? So for all those people who cook on you cook on charcoal at home and have very, very full um, uh, houses, houses that are very smoky, right? That's no longer a problem. And this is a big problem in North Thailand. 60 to 65 percent of cooking in North Thailand takes place with charcoal or firewood. This means that in Northern Thailand, cooking and forests, cooking in animal habitat, cooking in watersheds, cooking in biodiversity are at war with one another. Every time you cook on a normal three stone stove or a pot stove, you are in fact burning up a part of northern Thailand's forests. And our forests are shrinking very, very fast. On the other hand, if you use biochar made from crop waste, you are in fact recycling waste product. You are not having, you disassociated cooking from destruction of forest, habitat, biodiversity, and watershed, right? It's also super, super good for the soil, okay? If you can get biochar into the soil, you can restore badly degraded soils, and badly degraded soils are absolutely typical of the North, and you can increase soil fertility. Northern Thailand, something like 60% of our total soil here in Northern Thailand is listed as non-arable by the United States Department of Agriculture soil type lists, okay? People are not supposed to be able to grow stuff in the soil that most of our farmers actually use, okay? So, what if farmers turn just 10% of their crop waste into biochar, okay? The effect would be that they would not release 1.3 million tons of CO2 into the air. Now, you'll remember that I said, well, it was 10 million tons. Remember, oxygen weighs more than carbon. So when you take a million tons of carbon and you add to it a lot of oxygen to make it into carbon dioxide, 
you get 1.3 million tons, okay? That is the same, by the way, as not driving um, something in the order of um, 5 billion kilometers in a car. That is a lot. Even in Thailand, that's a lot of kilometers, okay? Now, you would also not generate 5,000 tons of PM 2.5. Now, compared to millions of this and millions of that, 5,000 tons of PM 2.5 doesn't sound like very much, does it? But well, one thing you got to remember is 5,000 tons is what? It's 5,000 times 1,000 kilograms. And one kilogram of PM 2.5 is the same as the smoke produced by 71,000 429 cigarettes, okay? So by saying that, if farmers did not burn one-tenth of their annual crop waste production, it would be the same as their, as our, our collectively not smoking 357 billion cigarettes. That is a lot of cigarettes. Put it this way. That is the same as every man, woman, and child in North Thailand not smoking 3.5 cigarettes per hour per day, 365 days a year, okay? That is a lot. And I asked, can we make this stuff ourselves? And I said, sure you can. So I went down there and taught them how to make it, and they began making their own biochar. And today, all of those beautiful gardens around 137 Pillar House are entirely organic. They are entirely um, fertilized with their own homemade fertilizer made with compost that they make with stuff off their gardens and with biochar made from stuff that they have on their, on their own. Um, so how do you join? Well, these little slips that are sitting around here on your seats, um, they ask you three questions. This is not a graded quiz. It's very simple. Um, may we call you next week um, to ask you if you'd be willing and able to buy some biochar for your company, for your own use or whatever? Um, who else do you think should know about biochar? And how much are you willing to donate right now to reducing the amount of smoke that's um, produced by uh, burning of crop waste? And that's, uh, you know, please take a moment to fill it out. Please be thoughtful about filling it out. People will collect the slips at the door as you leave, okay? Thank you. So the further question is, are we stopping here? And the answer, of course, is no. You know, I mean, we're not going to stop here. And why not? Well, simply because one of the things that we've discovered in the last few years is there is simply way too much crop waste out there. In light of the amount of biomass available to turn into biochar is immense. There are literally hundreds of thousands of tons of biomass available across Thailand. Okay. So what's to do? The only thing we can figure out to do is to teach farmers how to farm better, how to produce less waste. Okay? And the answer to that for us has been agroforestry, a new way of farming up in the north, which restores forests and, and produces food by intercropping food crops and forest crops. Why are we interested in this? Because we have too much of this, right? Those are cornfields that goes on as far as you can see. And this is simply crop piles of crop waste, right? We have too many of these. This is a really typical scene here in North Thailand. Steep slopes, cut, strip cut bare, burned bare, no trees left, nothing to stop the rain when it falls. All of that water goes straight to Bangkok, right? You want to understand floods in Thailand? You're looking at it right there. This is the cause of flooding in Bangkok. The absolute destruction of the great forests of the north that once 
fed slowly and surely into the water, into the great river systems of Thailand, okay? This is what soil looks like in Thailand. It's not soil, it is literally just dirt. There is no value in that soil at all. My farmer friends tell me, my soil is so bad it will not grow weeds without fertilizer. There's no organic matter there. There's nothing worth anything at all unless you pay a lot of money to fertilize it, okay? Put a lot of biochar in that, put a lot of manure in that, put a lot of forest over that, and you are going to have bumper crops, you are going to retain huge amounts of water, and you are going to restore habitat, biodiversity, watersheds, springs that have been dry for years and years and years, um, strip streams that went dry, you know, three to four months in the year will run all year round and so on. We have too little of this. I mean, Thailand used to be very largely forested and forested with triple canopy forest. It is no longer. The amount of forested land in Thailand is now below 20% and falling fast, okay? We have very few birds in the area around Chiang Mai itself, there used to be four to six hundred different species of birds. There are places around here where there are fewer than 75, okay? There's no water, okay? There are places where the water runs out in January or February and stays dry until whenever, you know, until the rains start again. That's just unacceptable. It should not happen. If there were forests, this would not happen. So what's the next big thing? It's called Restore the Earth. It's an effort to bring back the forests of North Thailand by turning those forests into fields, by diversifying the crops that farmers raise, by making it profitable for farmers, not just to make biochar, but to make it profitable for them to reforest Northern Thailand to diversify their crops, not to depend on a single crop, a single one time a year payday, but instead to be able to have multiple paydays that go on and on and on through the year so that over time they make more money at much less risk than they used to and at the same time the forest they are planting, their forest fields have the effect of actually making sure that they're restoring the soil, they're bringing back the water, and the forests that they're growing are absorbing carbon from the atmosphere, are rebuilding our environment in every possible way. So thank you very much for paying lots of attention, um, being so polite to me and so on as I went over and over and over again. Um, if you need to get hold of me, this is my email address and my phone number. Ms. Ong here um, will take calls and emails in Thai should you want to call. She is too uh, modest. She is actually the director of the biochar program at Walmart. Um, and this is where you can donate to the biochar fund. Thank you very much. <laughs>